Hi, I'm Brad, and this video is about ships. So yesterday I uploaded a recap video or sort of a clarification video talking about the Project Stinson or the Quest 3. Um, and one of the biggest questions I got was really people wanting me to clarify about the chip being used in the next generation uh, Consumer Quest model. And I've been saying that it will be the XR2 Generation 2. And I also was saying that I was just waiting on more sources to tell me a little more information. I was very close to leaking it um, in yesterday's video, but I wanted a little bit more time. And right after uploading that video, my sources sort of reached out to me again. And I'm at the point now where I'm very confident to share what you can expect performance wise and really what chip uh, the XR2 Gen 2 is based on in this video. And as I said in yesterday's video, I think it will impress a lot of people. So just a reminder, uh, the internal code name for the project of the XR2 Gen 2 from Qualcomm, they actually call it the Project Halliday, which is funny. That is a Ready Player One uh, reference, basically the creator of the Oasis. And um, I would say that no players are ready for this one leak. And that was a stupid tagline, but I am sticking with it. As always, disclaimers, this info does come uh, first from XR industry sources, or at least uh, it's most of the info. But there's also a lot of assumptions based on the uh, actual reference chip, which I will go into more detail in this video, because again, uh, similar to the XR2 Gen 1, they are taking a Qualcomm reference chip and just editing it and, and changing it to work better for XR devices. So this is actually not the first time I've really been talking about Project Halliday. I've been kind of hinting to it and talking about it multiple times. And in fact, the first time I talked about Project Halliday, I actually found it, uh, or I should say Samulia found it in some import records, which is funny because this is also how we found out about the revision to the XR2 Gen 1, which I like to call it the XR2 Plus Gen 1, but I don't know if that's really what they're going to call it. And that's the revision that's uh, said to be in the Quest Pro. And that was called Project Tron, by the way. But yeah, uh, Sumulia was just doing some random looks around in the, the actual import records like we did with Project Tron. And uh, they found Project Halliday and a lot of more information uh, in the description for the integrated circuits and sort of the developer test platforms that uh, Qualcomm seems to be building and sending out to vendors, probably big companies like Meta or Pico and you know big partners. That wasn't the only thing that was found um, not too long after I released this first video that you can see here with the thumbnail and title. Um, another user who is big on AR and MR, in fact, their name on Reddit uh, is known as ARMRXR, actually notes there also um, are references to the XR1 Generation 2 chip, which is called Project Aurora. Now, I'm, I did not ask around for this chip. I really honestly was not interested in it because I know it'll be used for products mostly like what you see here, basically smart glasses, just very small, low powered chips to communicate with a smartphone. I'm into the high performance stuff, so that is why I'm focusing on Project Halliday today. So yeah, the, again, the funny thing about the import records is Project Halliday actually gave a very big hint to the chip it's based on um, within the actual import records itself. I just didn't realize it at a time until I was talking to multiple sources and they were telling me what GPU was actually in uh, the Project Halliday chip. And um, it's actually marked right here, A740. And that is actually a reference to the Adreno uh, 740 GPU that is said to be coming in da -da -da -da, the Snapdragon 8 Generation 2, which is also known as the uh, SM8550. And this is what I've been told by multiple sources that Project Halliday is going to be based on this brand new chip that's coming out later uh, this year, or at least being announced later this year, especially November for the Snapdragon Summit, uh, November 15th or 17th. They're going to announce both the smartphone chip and the XR version. That is what I am being told, and I believe it because this is actually what happened. Same with the XR2 Generation 1. When they announced the uh, Snapdragon 865, they also at the same time announced the XR2 Gen 1, which is based off of that chip. Everything we know so far about the specifications comes from a lot of more uh, silicon or really just chip leakers. And I'm really going to regurgitate some of that information because it's still quite relevant to the chip that we will see for the XR2 Generation 2. 
A lot of this info comes from uh, Twitter user Universe Ice. Follow them on Twitter if you're very interested in chip leaks, especially related to Qualcomm. Um, so the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, also the XR2 Gen 2, will be mass produced on the TSMC 4 nanometer node, also known as N4. It's going to have eight CPU co uh, cores configured a bit differently than their previous generation uh, CPU chips. And again, Adreno 740 GPU, and that is the big one. Um, I will take a moment to talk about that a little bit later, but that GPU is very, very powerful compared to what we have in the XR2 Generation 1. And uh, for RAM support, uh, it actually can support either LPDDR5 or LPDDR5X RAM, which are actually much faster than what's in the Quest 2. The Quest 2, um, or I should say the XR2 Gen 1, supports LD, uh, LPDDR5, but at the beginning, it mostly supported LPDDR4X, uh, which is obviously slower and what a lot of these generation one products were using. Um, I believe the Quest Pro is bumping up to LPDR5 even with its XR2 Gen 1, but every product with this Gen 2 chip will start with that uh, faster type of RAM. And there's also um, encoding and decoding support for the AV1 codec and a heavily improved neural processing unit, which is very useful for a lot of tasks relating to AI and machine learning and, and, and computer vision. So. A lot of great stuff that can be uh, make the actual XR devices much more powerful. So again, just a comparison image here of the XR2 Generation 1, that is in like the Quest 2 or the Pico 4, and sort of the differences in how they're improving with the XR2 Generation 2, um, also known as SXR 2230P. So the uh, XR2 Gen 1 was built on 7 nanometer, and now the new one is being built on 4 nanometer, which is a whole kind of one and a half uh, node change or, or major node change, which is obviously much better for performance per watt. You can fit more transistors. You can make the transistors, well, you don't really make them smaller these days, but you do you do fit more, which uh, allows better battery life or better performance per watt. Um, the original came with the Adreno 650, but the new one is an Adreno 740. And again, I'm told especially that they put a lot of effort into this GPU for both the smartphone and the XR chip to where the point they are saying, I'm, I'm getting numbers around 2.5 times to three times uh, GPU performance over the XR2 generation one. And when developers start actually focusing on this chip, um, I, I'm sure there's gonna be some leeway where they start kind of not focusing on it right away. But over time, as more people adopt this uh, chip, they will be able to put it to its limits and get some more higher fidelity standalone experiences. And again, as I said, uh, the starting point for um, RAM options is higher and faster. One shout I want to uh, give out is in my last video, uh, Guy Godin, who is the uh, creator of Virtual Desktop, the very popular uh, streaming to PC wireless Wi-Fi streaming application on multiple, well, now multiple platforms, but started on the Quest. Um, he stated in the comment sections, which I pinned on that last video, that basically uh, a faster chip will allow better, more bandwidth and more decoding to happen, which will include and basically improve the wireless PC VR experience for these newer uh, headsets if you're into that. And one more thing I wanted to add to this is uh, none of the other chips before this supported what is called the AV1 codec. And it's basically a, uh, a, a, a royalty free codec that has been slowly getting more popular. Um, the only issue is it needed a lot of hardware acceleration to be useful. And um, a lot of GPUs are coming out this year, such as the RDNA 3 and the RTX 40 series are like the first um, like big GPUs to support it, at least the, the encoding stuff. And uh, this actual SOC will have AV1 uh, codec uh, decoding, which if they decide some, some people like Gee want to support this, um, it might be better off for image quality and better efficiency uh, overall than what is currently used for most compression algorithms. Um, but again, that is something that's still a little bit ahead of its time in terms of adoption, but is I just wanted to note it for the PCVR crowd. Another thing that uh, is very expected, maybe not right away, but this chip may enable in the future, is um, Wi-Fi 7. So the XR2 Generation 1 actually did have support for Wi-Fi 6E, which we're going to start seeing in products later this year. Quest Pro is uh, speculated and hev well, heavily speculated to support Wi-Fi 6E, but the Quest 2 
doesn't have a Wi-Fi 6E uh, antenna inside, but the actual chipset for the XR2 Generation 1 did support Wi-Fi 6E. And I think we're going to see the same uh, happen for Wi-Fi 7. Qualcomm has already announced uh, actual Fast Connect chips that support Wi-Fi 7, 6E, and 6 altogether. And um, if you don't know what Wi-Fi 7 is, I know we just started talking about Wi-Fi 6E, it feels like, but Wi-Fi 7... Uh, well, I should start with Wi-Fi 6E enables the 6 uh, gigahertz band, lower latency and uh, less inter interruption or interference from other sort of in wavelengths. But what Wi-Fi 7 does is it takes a 6 uh, gigahertz band and actually doubles the amount of uh, bandwidth possible. So you can start bumping up the resolutions much higher than even 6E. So it gets all the benefits of that 6 gigahertz 6E, but doubles the bandwidth for more higher resolutions, you could say, is the best example here. But I wouldn't expect Wi-Fi 7 chips to make it into XR devices, even if it's supported by the chipset until 2024. Um, and that's probably later in 2024 is what most people in the industry are saying right now. And then finally, I do want to mention that, uh, yes, uh, this is just a, again, a little summary of what chips are in each products. Uh, Quest 2 Pico 4 are the SXR 2130P based on the Snapdragon 865 or XR2 Generation 1. Quest Pro is based on the 2150P is what I've been told many, many times. Um, again, it's a revision of the XR2 Generation 1. And you might be asking, why didn't they... Uh, they, they, they release the Quest Pro with this um, Generation 2 chip. Well, the Quest Pro is supposed to release this month in October, and they're not, <laughs> they're announcing the Generation 2 XR2 in November next month. And just the way that time and, and, and products, the way these things work is this device that's coming out in October was pretty much designed and set ready for the uh, original XR2 chip probably years back. So it, it it's more likely the Quest Pro 2 even will uh, have a probably revised version of the XR2 Generation 2 when that comes out. At least that would be my heavy speculation, but I think it kind of fits with this timeline on how things are going. And the Quest 3 in the Pico 5, which is a product that is being designed, yes, uh, will have the XR2 Generation 2 starting next year. Anyway, that is everything I had to say about uh, this new chip. I think it's very exciting, especially if you uh, are not able to afford a PC or you just want uh, higher fidelity standalone experiences. Again, I think there will be a buffer of time before developers learn to take advantage of that chip. Uh, obviously, the same has happened for the XR2 Generation 1, um, but things are advancing pretty well for mobile SoCs, um, not just for ARM, but also for x86. I, I think there's a lot of stuff going on there as well. But um, yeah, awesome stuff. I think it's very exciting and I'm... <laughs> It's only a, a month away till we'll find out if this is all true and all my sources are correct. Um, November, again, uh, is the Snapdragon Summit. But um, yes, special thanks to all my Patreon sub uh, mega supporters, especially um, these people here. Very kind, very kind. If you want to support me too. And um, yeah, give me money. I like money. Bradsmells.com says Patreon. And I don't. I don't do anything behind paywalls, but again, if you just want to give me that money, it uh, every little bit helps for me doing this because I basically do this for free for the most part. So, yeah. Bye.